My name is Melissa Ritchie and I'll be demonstrating painting a portrait of Uncle Vic Chapman for Wollongong Art Gallery. These are the painting materials you'll need, including the different types of paints. Feel free to pause the video to make your list. For this portrait, I used a photo reference given to me by Wollongong Art Gallery of Uncle Vic Chapman. The photo that was given to me, his hand was cut off from the image. I requested another image from the photographer, which included his hand in full sight, so I could use this as a reference in the portrait making. For this painting, I'm using a wood panel, and I would like to show the wood grain underneath. I'm not going to completely cover it in paint. So to prepare the canvas, I'm using a clear gesso. I paint several layers of clear gesso, lightly sanding in between each layer. You can do this about three times. For the background, I am loosely basing it off the photo, which showed some fernery and greenery in the background behind Uncle Vic Chapman. I'm just with the watered down green paint, starting to create those leaves in the background, layer upon layer, and building on that background until I'm happy with it. Once I'm happy with the background and how it looks, then I draw in the portrait of Vic Chapman using just a brown pencil. Like I said, I want to keep that wood grain visible in the background, so I don't want to do anything too dark that won't be able to be removed. The pencil works fine for me. When I go to draw the hand, I use the second image shot, which shows his hand, and draw that in base using that image. For my skin tones, I use these colours. They are the basic primary colours, plus raw umbar for dark tones and titanium white for light tones. I tend to have three different tonal gradients of my skin tones when painting, a dark, a medium and a light tone and I'll paint those in, just blocking them in using my image as a reference. When painting, I tend to look for shapes in the tones, so looking for shapes of darkness, shapes of mid-tone, shapes of lightness. I don't think about what I'm painting, the particular shape of that colour block that I'm painting in and just keep to that mentality and stay focused. The moment you start to think, oh, now I'm painting a nose or now I'm painting an ear, you do tend to get a little bit lost and you will start to paint what you think you should be painting rather than the shapes that you were seeing before you. So if you stick to that idea about painting a shape, then you will get a much better likeness. I'm still painting just the mid-tones, so no highlights, no whites, no sparkles, no skin reflections, any of those just yet, just the mid-tones, but the three levels of mid-tones. A little tip for acrylic painting, keep a spray bottle at hand and moisten your palette so it doesn't dry out. Hands are notoriously hard to paint and if you stick to the idea that you're painting blocks of shapes rather than thinking about the hand itself, then you will get a good likeness. This of course takes a lot of practice and a good tip sometimes is to turn your picture upside down and paint your painting upside down. which makes the image that you think you're painting look completely different. It's a great exercise to try. For this particular painting of Uncle Vic Chapman, I really wanted to include his hands because he uses them in his art making practice and he has beautiful hands. These are the colours I'll be using for my highlights and shadows and this is the colours mixed together. Firstly, I paint in the highlights on the eyes, around the eyelids and the reflections on his eyeballs. Then I paint in the mid-tones of his facial hair, eyebrows and then over the top with the highlights of that within white. It is important that the hair goes in all different directions. Um, hair, especially facial hair, is quite wild and flicks off in numerous directions. So do not make them straight, otherwise it will look a bit forced. Watch the shape of the particular hairs that you're painting and follow those best you can for a more natural look. When painting metal, especially wire frames, 
it's not that difficult you just have to look once again for the highlights and the dark notes and you will see that little reflections are very sharp in certain areas where you have a crisp white and in other areas it's more of a mid-tone and then you have dark tones around so as long as you're following the rule of painting a shape and not particularly thinking about glasses or any any object in particular you should be okay this is my color palette for painting the black hat and the apple watch while the objects are pretty much black i use the ultramarine blue to cool off the color and the raw umber to warmthen the black tones so i still can get the tonal values similar to the skin tones i'm once again using three tonal values for painting the black hat with a little dash of the blue on the rim of the hat just to give it that cooler feel for the lighter tones. To give the Apple Watch that real shiny look, I'm heavily using the shadows and the highlights with very little mid-tone. But once again, I'm simply following the shapes that the image presents to me rather than thinking I'm painting a watch. This is the colour palette for painting Uncle Vic Chapman's shirt and the colours mixed together there. Now this shirt that Uncle Vic Chapman is wearing is a challenge. There is a chequered pattern to it and it's very fine detail. So it's all about layers. To start with, similar to painting the face or the hat, I'm simply going to paint the contours of the shirt using the mid-tones of light, mid and the darker mid-tones and getting that all blocked in and not caring too much about the fact that it's a shirt, just trying to look for the shapes within the image that the shirt presents. This is a colour palette for painting those checkered fine lines on his shirt. It is just watered down raw umber. I try to use a lighter wash on the lighter areas and a darker wash in the darker areas just to keep that consistent highlight and um, mid-tone dark light uh, feel to the shirt contours. I'll be doing several layers of this, firstly starting with the horizontal lines. Now this is very tedious so pop on Netflix on your iPhone while you're going ahead with this because you'll be here a while. Once all the horizontal lines have been finished across the whole shirt, then we start on the vertical lines. Make sure you stick to the contours. Imagine you're drawing over a three-dimensional shape and stick with that, otherwise you will lose that realistic feel that the shirt presents as a piece of fabric. Now we are still just working with the mid-tones. After this is done, we'll work on the highlights of the shirt. For the highlights, I use titanium white watered down with a fine brush. I attempt to go in between the already raw, raw umber lines um, in the areas that would the cotton would be white. Um, this is not a perfect process, so just do your best. Try not to muddy the pattern too much, sticking your, the best you can do with the finest brush you've got to be in between those already marked down crosshatch lines. Once all of those are in place, and yes, it, it will take a long time, um, you can go over the top of any of the uh, highlighted areas with a thicker brush, but a wash of the white paint, just to give it that uh, almost transparent white wash uh, highlight. Painting in the buttons, once again, I use the three tonal value rule that I've based on everything else. 
buttons are not just a circle with four dark holes in the middle they definitely have tonal values to give it a 3d appeal and each button will be different because they reflect different light so look at the image that you're using and do your best to replicate the shapes of the button So that's the portrait done. The next thing I need to do is paint the ceramic plate that Uncle Vic Chapman is holding. This is my colour palette. Although a white plate, it does have warm tones to it, so I'm using raw umber and cadmium yellow. If you've been following along with this tutorial, potentially painting alongside, then by now your eye should be really familiar with picking up the tonal values including something to an untrained eye like this that would just look like a white plate. Now comes the very tricky bit for me, which is painting in Uncle Vic Chapman's beautiful ceramic design and not butchering it. So I'm doing my very best and I'm a bit nervous. So you can see I'm doing a few different marks there trying to do my absolute best and justice for him. I am using a watered down carbon black just so that I can erase it away. And I do that with a uh, clean, wet brush and um, I can push away any marks that I've made if I have needed to erase something. But once again, I'm just blocking in the shapes and doing my absolute best. With this speckledy pattern, I'm just really roughly blotting in the little dots but then I come back over the top with a clean, wet brush and just um, wipe away, but very roughly, uh, the dots over the top. So it gives a bit of a mottled look and that way it doesn't look so forced and so precise and it does look more like a bit of a texture. Now I've blocked all the colours in with a watered down carbon black, but then once I've finished that, I'm going to go over the top with a little bit of carbon black with a bit of white added to it as a mid-tone and then an even lighter tone for any of the highlight areas. Because with ceramics, you do have highlights of glistening shine over the top of the entire plate. So I'm blocking those in. It gives the plate a feeling of a 3D object. So this is the portrait and it should be finished, but I'm not happy with it. I feel like something's missing. Using Photoshop, I add additional leaves, darker leaves to see if I like that. But then I look at the plate pattern and feel like maybe an overlay of that in the background might be a bit more personal. If you don't have Photoshop and you'd like to test out different ideas on your painting, you can use the markup tool on your phone. For me, I think I'll pursue the pattern in the background. Because I want to keep the wood grain in the background, I'm painting in this pattern with some decking stain that I have around the house. So I paint that in and I'm really liking how that looks. However, because this is a different type of paint than the acrylics I've been using, it is much thicker and I'm not 100% happy with the finish it has. Scraping it back takes away the thicker, thickness of the, uh, the wood stain, but it still leaves the pigment there and I really do like this finish. I'm really happy with the portrait now and the last thing I want to do is sign it. Sweet. Sweet. Yes. I really love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for following and I hope you enjoy this tutorial.